Hi, welcome to my channel, Rohit Speaks. And from this video, I'm going to start another series called as Drug Crisis, where I'm going to talk about a lot of drugs which are prescribed medically in this world, especially in US. And I'm going to talk about its side effects and overdose cases and how it activates in your system and how it works and what you should be watchful for. So um, these are commonly prescribed drugs which are available in US especially and also in Western worlds in Europe countries as well. Uh, but every country has their own regulations, so you might want to look out for that. But I'm going to talk in perspective of U.S. as I have more information on that. So in this episode, I'm going to start on talking about a drug called as ketamine or commonly called as K in street markets. Um, so why am I talking about ketamine? Because you might have heard about or this has been in the news about our beloved actor, Mr. Matthew Perry, who died on an overdose of ketamine. And this this is an article from NPR where they have uh, gone through the autopsy report and they sh proved that it is due to the acute effect of ketamine. So I'm going to talk about why and how that would have led to his death. So to get to know what you need to know, what is ketamine? So ketamine is a chemical or a small chemical compound which kind of blocks the NMDA receptor. So, so what what is all this basically? In in general, when you when your brain functions, it functions through its cells called as neurons. So neurons have to fire, has to excite to do all the signals. Even I'm making this hand move, my my neurons have to fire and signal my skeletal muscles that I have to do. It. So this is excitation. And now I have to stop it. So to inhibit my movement or to stop the firing of the neurons, there is another response called as inhibitory neurons. So those inhibitory neurons will stop the excitation. So there has to be a feedback loop in, normally in your human system. So generally think if your brain has to be, has to fire something, has to do something, it has to excite that neuron so that it brings that reaction and brings that action. But it doesn't have to be on all the time. It has to be switched off. So that switching off is done by the inhibitory neuron. So to activate the inhibitory neuron, the NMDA receptor is responsible for it. So basically when the NMDA receptor is active, it releases this neurotransmitters, which then releases, goes to the firing neurons and releases the glutamate. And then the glutamate kind of goes there and does its job to switch off that neuron or to bring that excitation neuron back to the normal. However, what happens during ketamine release is basically at ketamine kind of goes and sits in that NMDA receptor and it blocks its activity. So there will be no neurotransmitter release or inhibition. So what will happen is there is a glutamate spike and your excitation or excited neuron activity is still going on. It's constantly going on. So it allows your neurons to function a little bit better. Now why ketamine is prescribed in depression is because this activity is higher. You're inhibiting neurons. You're depressed. You're not doing anything. Anything. Your mood is down. You're not active. Hence, the inhibitory neuron is more active and it's more than normal. And hence, you go, even though it is due to certain thoughts or processes has led you to depress, but then your neurons, when it also goes under inhibition, it adds on to it and you get more and more depressed. So what how ketamine does is basically it will bring this inhibitory neuron to stop and what will allow whatever excitation is going on, it will increase and slowly, slowly your mood will go up. So ketamine is usually, previously or historically, it has been used for anesthesia to knock you out. But nowadays it has been prescribed as an antidepressant. But again, there are two different effects. One is an antidepressant and one is an anesthetic. And this all is dependent on the dose. So for depression, you're supposed to be given around 0.1 to 0.5 mix per kg. So for example, if you are 100 kg, just for the math, if you're a 100 kg in, uh, person, you need either 10 mix or max you need is 50 mix to work as an antidepressant. And for anesthesia to knock you out, you need is 500 mix. However, what happened in the case of Mr. Matthew Perry, I think he, or that's what it says, that he took 10 times the dose of the required medication. So basically he went close to his 500 mix and I, he was in his bathtub when he took that overdose of his ketamine to sleep or relax or whatever it was. And 
instead of being antidepressant, it became anesthetic. So basically he was knocked out and he went, he was in his bathtub filled with water. So he was knocked out, he slept on, and he was anesthetic. So he, he had no consciousness in his body and he basically drowned in his bathtub and that led to his demise. So this was the problem with what happened in his, in his case. Now ketamine is, when it is prescribed as depression, there are actually clinics here where you have to go and get this dose. So you don't overdose yourself accidentally. But however, in his case, he was given pills, which I, I don't know if he took it in terms of pills or in, in an injection, but he had access to it and apparently led to his overdose. So if you if he had those kind of uh, access to this kind of drugs, there is heavy chances of overdose here. So my whole idea here is to explain what happened in this case and how easy it is to get overdosed in in case of these kind of heavy regulated uh, uh, chemical compounds and this is one of the cases but the the other thing which is very easy to get is this prescribed medicine so if you say you are depressed you can even you can fake that and you can get these kind of opioid medications very easily as prescribed under the uh, doctor's uh, use However, at least in ketamine, there are clinics where you have to go and they will give you the drug. It's not that you have access, but depending on your influence in the society, you might get used to it. So, however, in the case of ketamine, uh, in case of Mr. Matthew Perry, this was a sad case where he kind of overdosed onto it, um, ketamine, and less sadly led to his death. One more thing I needed to tell that ketamine was also used as a psychedelic drug. So in certain small doses, when you're happy or when your 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 brain signals are firing and you're taking ketamine, in small doses it acts as a psychedelic drug. It basically it's so you're so technically what is happening is your neurons are not normally firing and you're happy, and if you take some alcohol where your inhibition is down, you're neurons are still firing and you take a small amount of ketamine, it basically gets you out of this world experience because, because your neurons are normally excited and then you're letting them being excited for a longer period of time and it leads to the psychedelic trance or some kind of out of world experiences which, which um, have been the use of ketamine as a drug, a street drug or K. So hopefully this, this video would give you some perspective on ketamine and how it works and how easy you can get overdosed and lead to your lead to your side effects or in this case death of Mr. Matthew Perry. So with this I start my series for uh, drug crisis or opioid crisis and I'll start taking the most cases of or I'll talk about the most used drugs and in, in our most prescribed drugs whose overdoses have been very acute and led to death in many cases. So with that, I'll see you in the next next video where I'll talk about the next opioid or a drug use. Uh, mostly, I'll start with propofol. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.